Acer is no stranger to designing boards with graphics chips on them, but you'll mostly find those in gaming laptops. This is their first desktop graphics card, and it's an Intel chip. This is a bit of a rarity. Not only are Acer dipping their toes into the GPU market, right as EVGA noted out, but they've gone with the new kid on the block, that being Intel, as well. This is the Acer A770 16GB Bifrost OC. Let's take a closer look at it. I'll start with the A770 16GB part of that, which is a 32XC or Z core 2.1GHz 225W GPU with 16GB of GDDR6 VRAM which is a fair bit considering the norm, you know, the competition normally only offers about 8 gigs at this sort of price point. Acer have pushed that 2.1 gigahertz up to 2.2 and offer it with their shiny new Bifrost cooler. This is a rather interesting design as it's half open air card and half blower card. The rear fan, complete with RGB lighting, of course, has a 4090 style blow through cooler, which I actually quite like. The front fan is more akin to their laptop fans. Apparently it's a 5th generation Aeroblade 3D fan, uh, aka a metal blower style fan that draws air in the sensor and exhausts it out the large holes at the back of the card next to your rear I.O. This can be quite effective as it gets all the hot air out of your case rather than spreading it around inside which can just heat soak your chassis and contribute to things like hotter CPU temperatures too. The catch is almost always sound and I would say that it is a little bit louder than the 3060 that I was testing against. Here's a clip of the A770 Bifrost running Furmark. Before we get into the performance results comparing to an RTX 3060, I need to show you Acer's Bifrost software. The Predator Bifrost software, which, by the way, I only found through a tweet. Uh, Acer, please fix that, make it actually available to find on the product page for this damn card. But anyway, it offers some overclocking and lighting controls and a bit of monitoring too. You can tweak pretty much everything that Acer offers here in Intel's own driver suite, which you will need to install anyway, although Acer does provide a few different profiles, one of which I've tested being the Turbo Profile, which sets the power limit up to 235 watts, up from the seemingly default 210 on the, the default mode. Now, you can switch to the user mode and drag that power limit to 252 watts if you want, if you want to push the envelope. So, the performance. Sadly, Intel didn't send out a stock A770 for me to test this against, but I think a similarly aftermarket design RTX 3060 should do the trick. I tested with the stock out-of-the-box performance alongside the turbo mode in Acer software to give you a rough idea of how this will perform. I'm testing with a Ryzen 9 7900X with resizable bar enabled and the very latest Intel driver, and Nvidia driver for that matter too, and potentially importantly on Windows 10. Starting with Hitman 3, this isn't exactly a promising start. On generally medium settings at 1080p, the 3060 runs away with it here, offering 168 FPS average compared to just 140 for the A770 on turbo or 136 on stock. Hell, even the 1% lows to the 3060 are almost as good as the A770's average performance. It's also worth noting that the delta between the average and 1% not 1% numbers on the A770 are quite large. The 3060 drops just 26% of its performance from average, whereas the A770, even on turbo, drops 39% from average. That contributes to not only a slower than average gaming experience, but a less smooth one too. Interestingly, at 1440p, the average results close up a whole lot. On turbo, the A770 is only 3 FPS slower than the 3060, although the 1% low is still leave a lot to be desired. 
Despite nearly matching the average performance, the low-end figures are over 10 FPS slower on both runs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a pretty similar result, with the 3060 holding a 10% lead over the turbo result, around 13% over the, the stock results. At least this time the 1% and 0.1% low figures match the 3060's results. Again, at 1440p, though the A770 matches or even slightly exceeds the 3060, it does end up with lower 1% and 0.1% low performance. This quirk of better performance at higher resolution isn't something that we tend to expect with the graphics cards. But I have to assume that that's thanks to Intel's new drivers. There could be quite easily some bottlenecks, especially at 1080p, that with future driver revisions, we may see those fixed and therefore get much better performance. For the time being though, this is what we've got. CSGO is a game you wouldn't expect to run all that well on Intel Arc. That's because Intel's new drivers only work with DirectX 12, which means running this DirectX 9 title is basically running through emulation. Still, despite that handicap, the stock performance of the A770, at least the Bifrost here, is remarkably close to the 3060. Now, I can't explain why the turbo mode results are considerably slower. Perhaps specific driver tuning that's been done for CSGO was done with, say, a given clock speed, and as I'll cover in a second, enabling the turbo mode can confuse that a little. The same happens at 1440p though, although again you can see that at least the stock result actually exceeds the 3060's performance here, although again it does offer slower 1% low results despite the higher average. Cyberpunk is by far the worst result for the A770. I tested and retested this multiple times, but the performance was consistent. At high settings, with no ray tracing, the A770 offers around 66 FPS average, down from over 100 FPS on the 3060. The 1% and 0.1% lows equally suffer, down at around 40 FPS. At 1440p, the gap isn't quite as stark, but that's only because the 3060 drops to around 73 FPS average, compared to the A770, which only drops about 10 FPS, down to around 56 average. The 0.1% lows are still faster on the 3060 than the average performance on the A770. That's a pretty big deal. One of the biggest wins for the A770 is in Microsoft Flight Simulator, where even at stock, it beats the 3060. It's not a massive margin, and the low end numbers still do let it down a little, but especially on turbo, you can expect nearly 10 FPS more here, which is great. It is worth noting that this is using the DirectX 12 mode, where you will often find less performance on the table for cards like the 3060. But seeing as the A770 can't run the DirectX 11 mode natively, and the game does support DirectX 12, I opted to test with that mode instead. At 1440p, the 10 FPS gap remains still, if not actually widens a little, and interestingly the 1% and 0.1% low numbers now handily exceed the 3060's offerings. Fortnite is my last set of results, where I experienced quite a lot of instability from the A770 even in DirectX 12 mode. With it running in turbo mode, I couldn't get it to complete a run at 1080p at all, and even with the stock results, I struggled to get a full 60 seconds worth of data. But I don't think it matters all that much, because again the 3060 just runs away with the performance lead here. It is worth noting that the 0.1% lows from the 3060 are due to Fortnite doing its rather usual stuttering, something that I've experienced on a whole bunch of cards and systems, so I wouldn't worry too much about that one. At 1440p, the gap is much closer again, although the 3060 does hold the performance crown here still. Now, I mentioned the turbo mode possibly having some quirks, and looking at the clock speed and GPU power draw, it sure does look like it. First off, at stock the card actually runs at 2.4 GHz, not the 2.2 GHz as spec. Secondly, it never gets anywhere near the 210 watts of stock power limit. The maximum I recorded it hitting throughout all of my testing was 190 watts, and during most games it was considerably below that. 
Here is a graph of the power and core clock during the Shadow of the Tomb Raider built-in benchmark. The most it hits here is 170 watts, and it's pretty all over the place throughout the run. What makes this even more confusing is if I switch this graph to the turbo mode results, the clock speed now sits at 2.45 GHz, and the power goes down? Yeah, it's drawing less power for the same or more performance. It even drops from 160 watts to 140 watts for the last part of the last scene. So what does this all mean? Well, for the time being, an RTX 3060 is still a better performing card. If you game at 1440p, the difference is smaller, but it's still consistently faster than even this overclocked A770. It's more stable, arguably more feature rich with better performance than things like ray tracing and you know features like DLSS as well. It's also cheaper. A 3060 can be picked up for around 320 pounds right now, whereas this Acer Bifrost card is a solid 400. Of course, the A770 is likely to improve over time as the drivers unlock more performance and stability, but I can't exactly recommend something based on a hypothetical future promise. If you buy one of these, you are buying something that isn't perfect. With that said, most of that is because this is an Intel Arc A770. Acer seems to have done a pretty good job here making their first GPU. The mixed cooler style is definitely interesting, it has its pros and cons, but I can't deny that it does a good job cooling the chip. I did ask Acer if they're planning on expanding to AMD and Nvidia cards in the future and was met with the somewhat expected we can't comment on future products response, although it did sound like a possibility. I would definitely like to see more of Acer's designs on various different GPUs, although from what we heard from EVGA on their sort of closing down tour, I wouldn't be hopeful that you'll find Acer's name on an Nvidia GPU anytime soon. From what I can tell, this is a step up from Intel's reference design, so if you are dead set on an A770, this does seem like a pretty good option. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the A770, and what do you think about Acer's first Bifrost GPU? Is this something you would pick up? Would you pick up a 3060 or something instead, or are you just in a different price bracket, or anything else? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want to check out the Bifrost A770, I'll leave a link to it in the description that you can check out, and if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. There are plenty of other videos on the end cards. I don't tend to do many GPU reviews, I tend to do more sort of builds and things with them, so if you're interested in that, check those out on the end cards. And that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making videos like these, then check out YouTube, the YouTube join button, become a member, uh, Patreon, or pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or there's a load of affiliate links in the description you can check out that don't cost you a anything you know extra to use but do help me out when you use them things like overclocks uk affiliate links other than that that's kind of it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed us we'll see you on the next video